Also, I'm one of the surgeons at South Falls. Uh, today, we are doing a portosystemic shunt identification ligation in a Maltese cross presented with hepatoencephalopathy. We did a CT scan which confirmed a portosystemic shunt going from, looks like probably the left gastric vein into the vena cava. If you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live spring. Uh, yep. I don't need it. So we're going to start with a midline abdominal exploratory. So I can feel the xiphoid up here. Extending our incision down. And we do have a previous spay incision. So we're going to have to watch out for um, adhesions of bladder and intestine to the body wall. So just to review for anyone who's arriving late. So we've got a year and a bit old Maltese um, with a history of hepatoencephalopathy. Had uh, bile acids performed and which showed elevation consistent with the portosystemic shunt. So we sent it home, put it on Keppra for a week, try to prevent post-op seizures. And then we've just done the CT scan today which confirmed the presence of what looks like probably a left gastric to portal vein, sorry, to vena cava shunt. Can we get a step stool for Allie? All right, so doing our midline abdominal exploratory. As I get down lower where the spay incision was, I'm just palpating to make sure that there's no bladder or anything attached to the body wall. See a nice little intestines in there. And removing the falciform ligament from fat. See the spleen sitting right in the way there. So we have a protocol with these to try to prevent post-op seizures. Um, we put them all on uh, Keppra beforehand. We put them on ace promazine when they're in hospital. And we keep them on dextrose when they're in hospital. And there's no proven benefit to any of those, but they're fairly innocuous procedures. And seizures in dogs are so devastating that I do anything I can to avoid them. So the liver is small. We can see that here. Gallbladder is nice and healthy. Very small liver, though. Stomach sitting here. I'm just going to look up at the diaphragm to make sure there's nothing abnormal up there. I have in a, or, or incidentally discovered a portosystemic shunt in a dog that was having a abdominal exploratory for something else. And so I always look up there. So there's my vena cava there, and I can already tell that's portal vein right there, and the shunt is going to be coming off that. Um, so we've got hepatic artery there, a little bit of the left lobe of the pancreas. We've got portal vein, vena cava, right kidney, and we're not going to be able to see our right adrenal gland. Pancreas is up here. Make the turn around the home stretch, caudal duodenal flexor into the jejunum, and 
just running the jejunum to make sure that there's nothing abnormal there. We'll come to the anti-mesenteric vessel, which will tell us that we're in the... James? Yeah, uh, into the ilium. ilium. So that's our anti-mesenteric vessel right there. So that tells us we're in the ilium. We've got cecum now. We will use the colon, mesocolon as a retractor, get the spleen out of the way, have a look down in the left furrow, and we can see the left adrenal gland and the left kidney. So the way that we get to this shunt is we're going to make a little perforation in the omentum. Let's get the spleen out of the way here. And we'll get a lap sponge to keep that out of the way. Question about the Sharpies that we use. We do ethylene oxide those. Okay. I can already see the shunt right there. Let me just tear through the momentum. Where do you get a better view? Right next to the pancreas. I keep losing my place. So let's just retract that out of the way there. I'm going to get a finger up there, please, James, or Ewan. Just in there, yep. Yeah. All right, so now that's the shunt right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yep, yeah. so that big vessel sitting right there. And I want to ligate it as close as I can to the vena cava. So that's the, the shunting vessel right in there. All right, so um, Allie, do you want to stick your head over the top here? So that big vessel right there is the shunt. And what's this, Charles, running longitudinally? It's a branch, so it's doing a big curly cue. Trying to establish where, so that's aorta there, or mesenteric artery there, so that's the shunt coming in right there. So if I put the ligature right there, or the, um, the uh, amyloid. And I'll try to avoid this vessel sitting on top of it. I don't know what that's doing there, or what vessel that is. And if you damage the portal or the shunt, during your dissection, you're really in a world of hurt because you can't ligate it. I have lost a patient doing that when I was a resident in training about 30 years ago. Come up here. I think that's going to be a lot easier. Um, can I get a sharper right angle, please? That 
retracted as well, James. Yes, please. So I just want to make sure because it's really curly around here. I think that's the normal portal vein there. Everything's so big. So where is that guy going there? That's not... That longitudinal one is not going into the vena cava. So we're pretty confident that that's not the shunt. Again, we have to be so careful dissecting around this thing, because if you accidentally push through the wall of the shunt, you are in big, big trouble. So I've gotten that around the shunt there. Camille, can I get a six mil or six and a half mil emeroid constrictor? So I've got that right angle around the shunt right there. Yep. Knowing what we know now, it'll be interesting to go back into the CT scan and see exactly. What's the matter? Okay, so this is my constrictor here. The big constrictor. Big constrictor with a very small keyhole. Yeah. So I've got that around the shunt now. I need to carefully remove the right angle. I'll just drop the key.
Okay, so I've got the key in there now. And that's pretty much it. So let's just see. That is appropriately sized. It's a bit big, but I think it'll be fine. All right, so we can release that. And now we just need to get a little liver biopsy. Quarterizer edge. And I'm just going to go back over to the other side and look at the vena cava from the other angle. Just make sure that the Can I get you to retract on that there and just make sure that the constrictor is where we think it is. Let's come back over to the other side. There's the constrictor there. Okay, so that's vena cava there. And that's the shunt going into the vena cava. And that is the constrictor. Okay, so just confirming. I'm actually not happy with having that in there. So now we're just going to have to exclude that artery, which is running right along the shunt. really dangerous what I'm doing now because if I nick the vessel I'm in big trouble all right so now Turning out to be harder than I initially anticipated. And the risk of tearing that is very real.
exactly in the same place. The problem with working with veins is that you can have a vein that's stretched and you can't tell that, that there's a vein there. I'm just going to leave that alone for a second and see what happens to the diameter of the shunt because I don't want to constrict it down with the connective tissue that I've kind of entrapped and stretched out. See how that's narrow there? And just just see if we're we've got portal hypertension. You could. what's happened is that I don't have enough room for it back here. Can I get a finger there, please? Can I get a smaller constrictor, please, a five? Thank you. That's definitely a five. I think we're fine. See how the QRSs are staying the same interval?
see that branch right there? That's what's causing the problem. There's a little branch from the portal vein that when I put the constrictor around it, that's causing a little band. So I'll just... And do we want to be downstream from that? doesn't really matter. It's such a small contributor. So what Ewan is asking is if that could potentially have some contribution from the portal circulation shouldn't we include that in our band, in our amyloid constrictor, which is exactly right. I'm so much happy with that. Uh, I've lost my key. Camille, can I get another five mil? Mm -hmm. And we'll have to find that key. That's the benefit of being in a place like this where we have extras of everything. So we'll just have to find that key, Camille. That is as challenging a one as I've had in a long time. All right, so I'm really happy with that. That looks really good. And that's definitely in the right place. Just confirming that that's what's going down into the, into the vena cava down here. Yes. Um, you want it to be snug, and the big thing is that you don't want to put a too big a constrictor in there because it can, it can kink the portal vessel uh, just with the weight. 
And so you kind of want to err on the side, a, a smaller one, if anything. So I'm really happy with that. So we are and done. Is there any to do a CT in the uh, only if there if the bile acids don't return to normal in the next couple of months. Um, or if they're deteriorating, and you're getting worse, we would consider doing another uh, CT scan. How do you separate your meals? How's your temp? Yeah. All right, do we have some towel clamps? Can we get some warm saline, please? Ewan to close that up, um, and I'll just come over and see if there are any questions. No, we've answered them all. So, um, thanks a lot for watching that. I'm going to leave it running for a minute with Ewan doing some abdominal closure. He doesn't mind. Um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications and like this video if you found it interesting and helpful. Um, I should have another surgery this afternoon, which is a rhinotomy for a presumptive nasal carcinoma, but it could be fungal disease. Anyway, so thank you very much for watching. I'm just going to hand the microphone over to Ewan and let him finish up on the closure. You happy to take the microphone? Let's clip this on to Ewan. Let's swap sides. Sorry, Chloe, could I grab some 2 PDS, please? Yes. James, would you mind retracting on that one? Give it a little flush out. Could I also grab a pool suction tip, Chloe? Ah, uh, yeah, so the um, amyloid stays in there well, long term. It's constricted, I don't know why. It's yeah. Yeah, so it stays in there long term, and it's a steel ring, and on the inside of the steel ring there's a um, substance called casein, and the casein absorbs the normal fluid on the inside of the body, uh, and as it absorbs the fluid it expands, so it gradually grows and shrinks down the size of that sh shunt, ideally eventually completely occluding it. Get you to hold both of those, James. Add some saline. So we're just going to do a little abdominal flush with some warm saline. Not particularly because this has been a contaminated surgery um, or anything like that. Mostly because we've got a little dog that's been under anesthesia for a little while and we're going to help our anesthetist out a little bit by adding some warmth. So for those still playing along at home, for the procedure we've just done, we've obviously used an amyloid constrictor. There are a number of other options for slowly occluding these jumps. One of which is cellophane, which is a, as you think of cellophane, like the lolly wrappers, which has basically been sterilized. And you pass that around the shunt and it gradually has an inflammatory effect around the circumference of the shunt and generates fibrous tissue around the shunt, which allows that shunt to be gradually occluded by that fibrous tissue proliferation. So, uh, you want to tell me what medical treatment has the dog had after surgery? So, in the post-operative period, these dogs will go home with Keppra, and our normal shunt management stuff, so some lactulose um, and an antibiotic of choice. I think at the moment we're using amoxiclav or amoxicillin yep. um, just to control the bacteria within the gut, producing that ammonia, which is going to contribute to the potential of hepatic encephalopathy afterwards.
We'll also have them in hospital on Ace Promazine and Keppra, um, as Charles said earlier, to try and reduce that likelihood. And then, as we were talking about before, so you can cellophane these as well, um, and some alternatives. Uh, it has been described to just acutely ligate them, which is not recommended. Um, and if you are going to do that, you would want to pressure transduce at the time of ligation if that was the only option present to you. And some other fun ones. People have tried putting hydraulic occluders, same as in our uh, urethral sphincter mechanism incontinence. Um, and gradually adding fluid to that to occlude the shunting vessel, which is kind of neat, but potentially unnecessary. So Capra will be continued until bioacids go back to normal? Yeah. So Charles has just said in the background here that our Capra will be continued until bile acids Normalize. Just a question that Ryan Chang asked. You happy to run that one for me, James? Mm -hmm. Why is the dog shaking? Uh, I suspect because it's a little bit cold. So we'll get him closed up ASAP. One of our visiting vet students has asked why the dog is shivering and I suspect that it may be because the dog's cold but my excuse is that I'm very nervous about being on camera and maybe I'm vibrating the whole dog. <laughs> <laughs> Keep a little bit of tension on that, but not too much. I'll grab the microphone back. Yeah. Try not to drop it in the field. Hey guys, Charles back here. Um, and so I'm going to wrap up the live stream in a minute, but I'm going to let you guys see what Kath is doing next door. She'll love that. So Kath is waving, she's doing a TPLO next door. I'm sure she'll love me for that. I'll have to pay for it later. Um, anyway, so thanks again for watching. And uh, I hope to live stream a rhinotomy in uh, a little while. It just depends on if I can get the camera off the surgery light in here and into um, the other surgery suite. So um, there's Ewan finishing up right now. So just doing the abdominal closure. That's 